are today again and here's where the other big big conversations begin as we told you earlier on today the crux of the matter remains the plan for orders across the federation from the first uh, to the 10th of august the big question is is it to be or not to be is there any magic wand that the federal government could kind of just swing in the air to uh, really assuage uh, the uh, organizers uh, of their grievances, to bring all the issues around them down, to help uh, to really calm the situation. What are those things you're expecting of the government to do between now and Thursday? That would not make the uh, uh, protest come into reality. These are the questions we're asking this morning. Joining us virtually this morning is the one that they refer to as the Olu of Lagos, Ola Inka Oyeni, we thank you, is the founder, Olu of Lagos, Ola Inka Oyeni, thank you so much for joining us on the program, or is it Oyeni Ji? Oyeni Ji, thank you indeed for joining us on the program today. Also joining us on the show today is a political affairs analyst, Belo Osigwe. Belo, good morning, thanks for joining us on the program. Good morning as usual and good morning nigerians good to be on the on the floor this morning yeah and so gentlemen the conversation keeps getting hotter and hotter as the first of august approaches at this point in time let me let me begin with you olayinka what are you hearing from your area within those members of your foundation perhaps people around you on the planned protest i guess the same question will go to you also bello all right i think that um Whew. It looks to me like a strategy. It's like um, going into a game of football and then outlining your strategies for the start of the game at halftime and then maybe you're trailing or you're leading. How do you get back into the game? How do you close it out? And uh, with, I don't mean any innuendos. That's what it looks like. Yes, uh, I believe that the third sector is pushing hard. Uh, I believe that the idea of a protest started from the third sector, possibly advocacy groups and non-governmental organizations. I know that Nigerians uh, are going through uh, suffering at this time, but um, Nigerians have always been resilient, if, if truth must be told. But it's gotten to a point where the third sector just thinks that we should take the government head on. And um, I believe the third sector is driving this. I don't think that um, the call for protest is won by all Nigerians. Everybody keeps looking for the Messiah that will come and turn things around in Nigeria. And I think that the third sector has taken it upon itself to drive this um, uh, campaign to have uh, protests. I don't think that it is a collective will of Nigerians or that many people will get involved as of yet. I suspect it's still the third sector driving this. That's uh, my feeling uh, from the streets. I, I want to believe that uh, your, your feeling is, um, is a function of um, survey and research work done around um, around um, your, your vicinity. Um, let's put the same question across to Belo, Belo Shigwe. Uh, Belo, let's get your thoughts. What, what's, what signals are you getting around, around your area? Uh, what are people talking about? Yeah, is it? It's all over the nation. The whole Nigerian are looking forward to this protest. Even though at best the government and its officials are trying to discourage Nigerians from coming out to, um, you know, air their grievances over the nepotic nature and the maladministration of his government and the previous before it, the vibes in the air, particularly in Eco Lagos, is that everybody are gearing towards coming out. Even though there is an element of fear in the air, but of course, again, Nigerians should know that protests if well conducted is within their civil rights it is constitutionally backed up so no government official or is um or its agents to try to dissuade or discourage nigerians from airing their view as far as i'm concerned most of the people i've interacted with 
most of those I've had one-on-one -on -one discussion with and those who have approached me have been with the mind of coming out. I don't know who fixed the August 1st or whatever dates they have uh, marked for it, but be it as it may, the, the, the decision out there is that Nigerians are looking forward to such a time when they will all pop out just as it was in 2020. In 2012, Nigerians are also looking for such a time as that. All right. Uh, thank you indeed, uh, Bilu. Let, let's come back to you at this point in time, Luinka, and uh, take a look at what um, many people are asking for, Luinka, I beg your pardon, what they're asking for. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if you've seen the, the, the list of demands. There's some demands, I beg your pardon, by the organizers or even the ones that you're hearing from Nigerians. But what you can really hear is that while you get to hear um, things like hashtag and bad governors, hashtag end hunger, hashtag end hardship. So many hashtags there uh, moving towards uh, Thursday. Uh, when you look at all of these issues on the table, that they valid and are there other ways the government could have handled things better to ensure that it averts what could happen from Thursday? So, uh, so first of all, um, for full disclosure, my organization hasn't conducted a survey uh, to gather the, the feelings of Nigerians. Well, we play in the third sector and we've been interfacing with colleagues uh, in the advocacy space. So people want to protest or they think that they should exercise their rights to protest. So just to correct that. Now, uh, second thing, uh, I think that the government has handled this very badly. I think that the government played into the hands of the third sector. Um, so first off, why should we get to this point where uh, the citizens, whether by themselves or represented by the third sector, would have to hold the government around some of a call for protest? I, I would never ever understand it. Uh, I was speaking with a colleague yesterday and I said, I thought that Lai Mohammed was the worst minister for information that Nigeria had. Now we have a minister for information whom I don't know and who is mismanaging communications on behalf of government. It's unbelievable. And, and that's the problem that we face. First lesson there, before we even get into office, we should start to identify credible hands, competent with character that are able to manage portfolios assigned to them, whether we have a reading on the back of political favors or not. We should identify people who are well, uh, who are seasoned for the, the relevant portfolios. You don't just put people into offices because they think it's relevant or that it is a, a place where you can give them some aggrandizement. It is zero. We don't have a minister for information in Nigeria as of today. And I think that we should use this platform to call the minister for information out. Okay, the government has been doing some significant work in the last six months minimum. First off, this government is barely one year in office. There's some doubt about that. The only thing, the only argument against that is that we've had the All Progressives Congress in office at different levels in the last, say, 12 to 15 years, and then in Lagos, say, about 20, approaching 25 years. Okay, that's the only argument. However, this government is in office. So, what do you expect? What's the argument for the third sector? You come into governance prepared. Okay, so we expect that the government should have come in prepared. Okay, that is taken. But we now have local government autonomy i didn't give that lawsuit a chance the lawsuit to the supreme court because i have in the last in the last i've been practicing since 2003 the first decision of court that stuck in my mind was uh mobile law and monopo okay it says that the supreme court will never go the way of technicalities in the face of justice but that is what we have been experiencing in the political landscape in the 20, 20 years or so. That's what we've been experiencing. So you come to court, you expect something different to happen, but you start to see uh, technicalities flying all over the place. You cannot prosecute somebody who's stolen money because the person has obtained injunction from somewhere. The first thing they do, you invite somebody for questioning, case in point. Mr. Uh, former governor of Kogi State, okay? He goes to court. Why do you go to court to stop law enforcement from investigating you? So in this case, I didn't think that Supreme Court will agree 
with the federal government that the local government autonomy should be um, practiced in the way the Supreme Court has ruled. I thought that that should have been a function of the legislature. I thought it, it would mean judicial rascalism to go ahead and enforce uh, local government autonomy at the court rather than by the legislature to amend the constitution. But the Supreme Court did that pleasantly, something I don't agree with. Nobody is talking about it. That is something that the Minister for Information should have jumped on to say in our drive to enforce true federalism. We went to court and within weeks, it wasn't up to eight weeks that the Attorney General of the Federation filed that lawsuit. Oh, the judgment God. came out. So, something that I would never have thought it oh, oh, was. God. The government yes. has been, excuse me, let me round up on this one. The yeah. government has been taking steps to as uh, to meet those demands even before they were made. But nobody is talking about it. All right. Uh, uh, well, well put, I must say. So very well put, uh, Olika. Uh, uh, but, but then would, would you have thought that... Um, if the Minister of Information had done all you have, you have, you have, you have, you have you've highlighted, it would have changed the narrative as regards the planned protest. Oh yes, it would have. If I was the Minister for Information, I would have highlighted all the things that this administration has been doing in that regard. I would have talked about the fact that the administration supported Dangote Refinery to completion and that we are now at teaching stages of deployment. I would have talked about the uh, local government autonomy. I would have talked about the ongoing constitutional amendment and the fact that the bill for the Asperger how, how voting does has that, passed second reading. How does that deal with the concerns that Nigerians are that some of the ones are, are talking about the hunger concern how has that brought hunger uh, i mean to, to the bears i mean to, to to the bear right now how has that dealt with hunger concerns yes yeah, so the thing you do is to talk about the goals okay we have identified goals that we want to 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 achieve and that we have placed a time to it by so 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 time this will be achieved check it against us by so so time we would have concluded on the economy with uh, the fact that we don't expect to import crude by so so time then there will be we are going to lower prices i would have said that we remove subsidy to be able to achieve this we did that wrong which is another mistake they did you don't frame policy without involvement of the polity you don't nobody does it anywhere and that is what should have been put in context to manage information oh we did wrong by not properly articulating the removal of all subsidy we are wrong and we are sorry give us by so so time you see the impact everybody is rushing all, all about to say don't protest how does that even address the issue without right. engaging the quality properly okay Olainka, first and foremost i'm glad that i mean eventually you said that you knew about muhammad idris as being the information minister and that you were only talking about the fact that he's not been delivering on his mandate as you would have expected of him to do so thank you for the clarifications because i know that we have a piece of information however let the question also go to Belo Osigwe at this point in time is it about mismanagement of information maladministration lack of key, I mean, a, a policy direction. What are those things that you hear in Nigerians talking about? And in what ways do you see this present administration addressing them, if they are? I'd like to, I'd like to put the record straight um, from what Mr. Olayin Kaaf said. The, the current administration has gone beyond one year, not less than a year. Having said that, it's as if all the people who have been made Minister of Information come up from the same family. The last one who went was Laya Mohammed. This current one is um, Mohammed Idris. And you find out that they, they told the same lie in trying to confuse and, 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 and you know, get Nigerians to believe in the maladministration of their government. Not too long ago, you heard from Bayo Nonuga, one of the fellows some of you respected, even though for me, I have no respect, no regard for his person. Everybody should be able to hold on to, to whatever they are saying. For Bayo Nonuga to come out and say to Nigerians, speaking on the behalf of the government, this same government, and then you are casting aspersion on Mr. Peter Obi. Every one of us knew what happened uh, uh, during um, uh, the last presidential election in um, February 25. We knew where Nigerians casted their votes to. But if the Supreme Court has a job to say, okay, this is the man whom they have given the victory to, there's no problem about that. But you will agree with me that for over 14 months now, this nation, of course, again, this is a continuation of the APC, APC government. And they have ruined Nigeria, whether we agree it or not, they have ruined Nigeria. They have dilapidated the structure that held Nigeria together. And you can't stop the people from protesting, uh, 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 protesting you know, 
Of course, what was what protest, by the way? It is the collective gesture of disapproval of a government that is led by collective set of people. Nigerians are dissatisfied. For the past 14 months, Nigerians had only known poverty, hunger, at the expense of some of these few people at the hands of affairs, eating and eating large. If you don't allow Nigerians to protest, we'll go down the drain. Not too long ago, you saw on national TV, one of the members of the House of Assembly, or National of Assembly, whose daughter, an 18 years old child, who was graduating, my, my own daughter also graduated from this same system. And then you had someone whose daughter was graduating and you are presenting a 65 million era SUV, and you expect Nigerians to keep quiet at the face of this dilapidation, at the face of this hunger. There is no way Nigerians will continue. Even if you help Nigeria spell doom, a day is coming when that spell will break off. And we are already getting to that time. You can't you can't expect someone like Bayo Nunuga, who some of you hold in so uh, and in so much in high esteem, coming out to disregard his personality by casting as passion on an innocent man in the name of Peter Obi. No, we won't accept that. If you don't know where to put the blame, blame your government for having so much in their cabinet, blame your government for wasting Nigerian collective fund in trying to settle the National Assembly, blame the government for excessive expenditure, blame the government for trying to play politics. We have gone past politicking. This is the time for governance. Election is over. The president and their party should begin to face governance. The people are hungry. I mean, you say you approve a 70,000 era minimum wage. Tell me, even when it was still 30,000 and the value of the Naira was still appreciative enough to acquire something. Now that the you increase that money to 70,000 and you have perhaps a tuba of yam, let me quickly say this, a tuba of yam in the market as I'm talking to you today, the cheapest you can get is about five or 6,000 Naira. So if you put 70,000 together for a family of four or five, it won't even last them two or three days. And so Nigerians have every right to vent their anger. Nigeria had every right to say, no, we can't go this way that you are taking us. And I would have even advised the president, because I've said this time and again, we are looking forward to a president which we can call our president, not the president. As it was with the last administration, we refer to that one as the president. It is obvious also that this administration is fired the president. We are looking for our president, one who can feel the Nigerian pain. I read over the news some time ago that it's true or not, that the president is also trying to slash his salary by 50%, just as those in the National Assembly have done. Now, whether you slash by 50% or not, what addition will he add to the life of the people? Will he improve the, 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 the well-being of the people? Will he increase standard of living or not? No, we need accurate policies that we address, tailored. Yes to addressing the menace uh, that right. Nigerians are facing. Nigerians are going through hard time. We never bargain for this. Uh, all right, uh, uh, Belo, Belo Sigwe. Well, it's, um, it's no longer news that um, the, there's a planned protest. And then uh, this, this news has been, has been out there for, for, say, close to about a month that um, this notice of pro protest has been out there. Uh, what would you have thought that this government could have done differently, like in the immediate, that could have averted, uh, that could avert still, there's still some time, that could avert this planned protest? It, it is not to call on the traditional rulers. It is to address the consciousness of the Nigerian people. Of course, are we, are, you, can, you can correct me on this. I've never seen the, this president now engage the media on a one-to-one -one discussion in matters like this there are sensitive issues that have plagued nigerians that we are all glamouring on i love what, what mr denny said if you don't for instance give the efcc the opportunity to carry out their duty how are they going to nip all of those corrupt politicians on the board someone at 80.2 billion of nigerian and in particular state resources and you are saying the court should cover that person, what is even wrong with our legal system? I thought from what they said, the cliche that is out there, that the legal framework, or perhaps the courts, is the, is the justice room for the common man. But even the common man cannot assess the court of today. And you have a whole lot of, you saw what happened and what is still happening in Kaduna, in, 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 in River State. All of these are pointer 
to the dissatisfaction of those who have run government before now. So what would I have expected this, this man to do, the president to do, is number one, as I keep saying, cut down your expenses, cut down your administration. But what do you need, what do you need over 50 ministers for? And what are the impact of these ministers? They just go to office at the end of the month, they carry millions of naira to their home, most of them to their families and some of them to their girlfriends, whether in Nigeria or as of Nigeria. What do you need 50 ministers for? For crying out loud. And you saw the kind of policy that the central bank is doling out. You are rolling out policies that is anti the economy. Why won't the economy have go through the system, go through the pain that is facing today? And so the people have the right to come out and protest because it is their constitutional duty. How be it? I will advise the president because in 2012, just like we have had Sheikh Usani said to us, the president, Mr. Tunubu, is the father of protests. So he should also be at the forefront to tell Nigerians that, of course, I am also feeling the pain with you, but the government we are practicing, this and this and this are what we met. Give us some time. And anyway, we've lost patience with timing. If you have done eight years of your party have done eight years and now we're having a quick of about one year and about three months in this same system, there is no excuse anymore. It is either you can do the job or leave that office peacefully. That is okay, what I would advise. Okay, you are here the threatening. I, I'm, I'm coming, let me drop on this. The, 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 you are here then, okay. say, like in Lagos, threatening the people with Oro. What has Oro got to do with protest? Are Oro, is Oro coming to join the protesters? This is right. just funny. We can't believe it's happening in our nation. Okay, Bello, thank you for that. Uh, I mean, for those who are hearing that uh, maybe Oro is coming out, maybe uh, you can share with us how much that uh, really would affect you if it ever happens. So, Lainka, let me come to you at this point in time. Flashback, hashtag answers, 2020. Some things went wrong with the protest, and this administration is saying it is worried that it could come again. So what to talk about this after this very short break? The question will be, what are the worries of even people like you as August the 1st approaches? After this time, do stay with us. The planned nationwide protests, if everything we're talking about is to go by, should take place on Thursday. But the federal government and in fact some state governors, traditional rulers, others alike, are trying the best they could to ensure that this does not hold. Now, is this to be or not to be? We see how very much with us. Ola Inka Oyeniji, the founder of Olu of Lagos, as well as political analyst, Belosi, where we're trying to really deepen this conversation. Before the break, Ola Inka did start on uh, you know, uh, a flashback to what happened in 2020 during the hashtag NSAS protest. Uh, many worries with regards to what could happen on Thursday should things go wrong. Are you worried as well? Oh, well, um, I keep uh, trying to give the president a chance, to be honest. Um, I don't believe in the fact that we keep looking at the president as a father of protest or that he was actually. Uh, an anti-military activist. No, I don't see the president like that. I think he's a very calculated man. He's always been. And he used all of those opportunities to amass some kind of personality for himself. So I don't think that he ever sees himself as a civil rights uh, activist anymore. The same way Festus Keyamu, Dino Milai, all of those can I don't see them when we talk about getting military out of power and they say they play active roles. So what went wrong? So I refuse to see them that way. But if the president um, is still as smart as I, I think he used to be, I don't know. And that may have anything to do with his intellectual capability or cognitive reasoning, because, I mean, his, his aging. Uh, I don't think that this has been managed properly. Do Am I worried? Okay, if, I, if the president is a person I, I think he used to be, I won't be worried, because that means he remains a tactician who knows when to come to the table and discuss i mean with the i was disappointed about the outcome of the uh, engagement between nigerian labor congress and the government to 70000 when the labor uh, congress was talking about 250000 what would do, what would 70000 buy today so it looks like the president is a very smart man i don't know how he got away with that that said 
I think that there's nothing to be worried about building on that with respect to the protest. I believe that the president understands what military interference or law enforcement agent interference would mean. It would simply escalate issues. It would increase tension beyond even overheating the polity. With respect to answers, I mean, the president then, as a citizen, was called, okay, to, for inquiries on why it went south, okay, uh, with what happened in Lagos. And we have it on audio that he said he had no knowledge of it. He wasn't told that they were going to bring military out and all of that. And Son Olutu was very apologetic as a governor of Lagos State. I believe they have learned their lessons. I know that the government is uh, consists of different individuals, including charlatans, who seem to think that they are wise with respect to managing situations like this. So there will be those who will say, bring out the street urchins and the area boys, confuse them, uh, um, I mean, disrupt, and then bring law enforcement agencies under the guise of calming the storm. There will be those who are offering that advice. I mean, if you look at the corridors of power, we have different kinds of individuals, people who don't have any business in governance coming out to try to uh, interfere in, in an otherwise peaceful uh, protest. The same thing happened during the elections in Lagos State. We saw it. We can't look away from that, okay? Uh, people being threatened not to come out. I... Those same individuals need to be curtailed at this time. If we allow that interference, this will go south quickly. I'm saying that I don't even think the protest will achieve much. Allow the protest to go through because it doesn't even look organized yeah. at this point. Allow it to go through and let us see where it goes. But what is important, and I agree with my colleague, that the president could have engaged the nation better. He is wise, he's, ad he's adept at this, and I've not seen that yet. And we shouldn't wait till two days before it. Because what would then happen is if we attempt to gaslight the protesters, a day or two before to start to sow uh, discord amongst them then it will get very violent quickly so as of now i think that it doesn't look like it will achieve much because there's no coloration to it it's there's no there's no model to even follow to say this is what the protest will look like start to continue to engage the stakeholders okay so that a night before there will be a possibility that conversations are ongoing and then we can come out with a result to say that the protests have been suspended. That's my opinion on that. Uh, if I may ask you, who do you think are the stakeholders in this planned protest? Because um, government will come and tell you it's faceless, we don't have, they don't have leaders. Who are the stakeholders that should be uh, dialogued uh, with or engaged by the federal government in this conversation? I, I do not think it's faceless, and it's, it means running away from my responsibilities to say this protest is faceless. I can reel out at least three names on my fingers. If I take half the time, I can give you ten names of people you should be calling immediately that would that people respect and will say, because this person has spoken, we are going to suspend the protest. Number one, you have to get Femi Fallon on the table. There's no doubt. If you look at the third sector now, it's the one everybody is looking at to be able to uh, drive something. You have to get a Bwade Borua on the table as well. Then the take it back, take it back movement by Shure. Shure was the one who started to call for uh, protest even before we got into this year. Immediately, Shure got out of, of jail. The first thing he started talking about was protest. There has to be a representative of Unam Dekano or the Southeast. Get all of those people in a room and discuss with them, then you you be rest assured that the protest is either the impact will be whittled down drastically or that it will even be suspended. But again, like my colleague has said, there's no way that we can see any public engagement with respect to this administration. It's, it's so very interesting. People were adept at being able to engage the public as uh, advocates or as activists before now have come into government and they've lost every sense of uh, public engagement. So get those people, five or so of them into a room and start to engage with them. They will release statements to say, this is what we are discussing with government. And by all means, get NLC involved. There's no protest without NLC. I thank you indeed, Olinka. Let's come to you, uh, Bello. Um, many people keep asking questions. I mean, they ask people like us as well and the organization as to uh, what path should be taken by the organizers to give it a well-defined face. Uh, and this, they say, is the best way for them to get the, uh, the most out of the demands they're placing before the government at this point in time. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. And to further buttress what my colleague Mr. Lyon has um, 
uh, as um, brilliantly laid down. Um, if you must, if you must need this protest, because it will happen. Uh, but if you must need it, those names he had mentioned, if if it's a wise government anyway, they need to listen to his advice. Uh, but I've heard Shore, I think it's not even the country, but I've heard him from wherever it is, saying even if this government invited for such a meeting, he will not honor. And again, going a little bit further to what my colleague has said, apart from those five names, the government must interact with all Nigerians. Um, protests that will succeed are protests without face. Protests that will succeed happen spontaneously, like the answers. So if the government know how to stop this, then they must begin to interact and interact objectively. However, if the protest eventually occurs, this is an opportunity for us to call on the law enforcement um, agents, particularly the Nigerian police force, with the Inspector General, Mr. Beto Kun, that is heading that agency, to ensure maximum protection for all those who will be coming out. Perhaps it might even include some of us. They must ensure, give their men in all the state, in all the 36 states, including Abuja, proper protection so that hoodlums will not hijack this peaceful protest. I want to believe that the protest that will be happening, if, if at all it happens, will be peaceful. It is just for these people to send home their, their, their in feelings about what is happening and how they feel about this government. That is not, nothing big. And if you will listen to what the people are saying, or you listen to the office of the people, then you will begin to make headway. But for as long as you begin to play the death drum, there is no way the people will take you serious and for so long. I ask a common question. Of all the numbers of ministers that the president has put in his cabinet, which one is working? Even the young man that is heading the communication, uh, I think he also had some issues with his um, with his viral viral message at the time. Today, who is hearing about it? So everybody just find themselves into government. When you get there, you just sit in the cushion of your AC and the comfort of your home, and then you forgot that there was a reason why you were brought into government in the first place. So let the government sit down and face the issue of governance. If you do that, protests will be limited. We've not seen protests for a long time since the, the uh, 2020 NSAS process. And what, what are we even agitating in this process? We kick against bad governance. We are asking for the release of Finan de Kanu. Even if you have anything against that man, why not allow him to go to his house since the Supreme Court and other court of, um, of um, jurisdiction has granted him bail? Why not allow him to go and anytime you need him, you invite him? Those who have truncated Nigeria are busy enjoying the largesse from which they have stolen from. And a man who have not stolen one error from the Nigerian person's language in jail. All these injustices are part of the reason why Nigerians are saying enough is enough. We can't continue this way. Nobody is more Nigerian than any. We're all Nigerians. All right. Uh, all of us Bill wish up. for a better country. Yeah. But as it is now, the country is going down the drain. And we must all rise up and speak against it. All right, uh, Belo Oshigwe. I, I think your, your point is well, well noted. So I'm going to ask you a very direct question right, right about now. And I'll also throw that same question to uh, Oluinka as a parting shot. Now, so in view of all the rhetorics around the planned protest, what's your direct stance on the protest right now? Can you hear me? Please post your question again. What's your direct stance? What what exactly what, what do you what do you stand for right now as regards this protest? Do you think um, we should come down or do you think um, the protest should go on? No, the protest should go on. What is protest? Protest is just making a strong objection about government politi uh, policies. The protest should go on. But um, I beg to differ a little um, with my with my colleague from the other side. Given those things he had mentioned, I wouldn't like any leader from NSC. If I thought you want to even invite people you interact with, not NSC, they are sabotage. You don't call the NSC chairman or the TUC chairman. 
people who go to Astro Rock and they are laughing when you give them some sugar tea. No, you don't need those kind of people to negotiate protests. They are the one who truncated this process of a uh, minimum wage. So if you must invite people at all, aside from the um nsc all the other names my colleague have mentioned wonderful respectful people bring them on board but i am 100 percent in agreement with this protest it is affecting yeah. everyone even the president all right Bello, i mean your your stand uh, fully known there uh, same question goes to your line however let me add to this there have been reports that some of the organizers uh, uh, are in the diaspora and that they should also be leading from the front. So uh, would you rather you see them face to face, you can relate to them, they, they really are interfacing with those who want to join the protest, both those that are home and abroad, and that they should be open to further negotiations for better governance with the government? Right. Uh, so, first of all, well, you'll be shocked to know that there are people in the diaspora who cannot buy a ticket home. The government joined the protest. That's the one, and yeah. that's the truth of the matter. They are talking about Very four correct. or five million average on ticket. It's difficult to be able to to travel to Nigeria now. This number one, number two, it's wrong to keep thinking that uh, some of the organizers uh, are in the diaspora. We, we don't have any evidence of this. We have diaspora organizations that are involved. I mean, name them. Let us know. Number two, number three. Um, as regards even organizing protests, you agree with me yourself that from uh, 2020, 2021 up till now, protests have been driven from the social media space, <clears throat> and that's why we remember them by the hashtags. It's it's more happening on the social media. I'll tell you the truth. That's where it's activated from. That's where it's funded from. That's where the convergence is being is being gathered. It's not on the yeah. streets. So on social media, people holding Twitter spaces. I would like to hold Twitter spaces from today, leading up to the election, and you hear people and you hear the plans that they have. Do I think that the protest will be um, effective? I don't think so. Quite honestly, my alternative would have been for us to say we are going to sit out in front of the National Assembly. That's what I want. We are going to sit in front of the National Assembly. Nobody is going in. We don't have Senate and House of Reps. Let them choose one. And the remaining people, we send them back home. Never to come back again. Those who are remaining should amend the Constitution to say Nigeria is moving towards unicameral legislation and we are reducing the cost of governance. That is a giant leap. So to say we are protesting without it being organized, I don't see where it's going, all right? But for us to sit out, let's go and sit uh, at the Supreme Court and ask the CJN to come and address us. That air spot, you're not talking technicalities. That's, that's what happened with the election petition, okay? And that's what we have seen subsequently. Never again, the Supreme come and write something as the CJN to say never again, because that's what the laws say. That never again will we be sacrificing justice on the altar of technicalities. Go to Asorok and sit out there, sit on the floor, and tell Mr. President, you have to cut cost of governance before we even start listening to you. Let yeah. the whole world see. That's what we should be talking about. Now when we are sitting down, we already know from NSAS that they can start shooting and deny they are shooting. We deploy our drones in the skies. Okay, we are sitting there, we are doing live. The whole world is seeing us. Start to misbehave if you can. That for me is better than just saying people should take to the streets. Let's march on Abuja and sit down there and hold the conversation with the president who doesn't want to talk to us. So I think the protest should go on. I, I am sorry for the government that he has badly managed this situation. I wish that they could manage it better. All right, all right Oluika. Oluika. Maybe oh. goes on timelines. Thank you. Th thank you so very much. It's it's not it is not over yet. Uh, we still have about three 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 days before the protest. Just maybe government have a, a magic wand that they want to like throw uh, throw out there, and probably everyone will come to to terms with uh, what we are uh, uh, what the decisions will be. Oluinka Oyeniji, founder Olu of Lagos. Thank you so very much for your time and thoughts with us on the show this morning. Thank you, Oluinka. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for having me. And um, Dr. Shigwe, uh, thank you also. Always a pleasure having you come talk to us on News of Bello Oshigwe is a public affairs analyst. He's also the founder of the City Lights Foundation, Leadership Foundation uh, Academy, rather. Thank you very well. Thank you very much for your time with us on the show. Thank you. It's, it's always a pleasure being in your studio. And um, we wish Nigeria well. <laughs>